I'm very happy to be here. I'm very happy to see new faces. Um, so two years ago, I talked about strings. Uh, last year, I, I talked about strings on top of TCP. So uh, this year, it will be strings on top of UDP. So that's very, there's a continuation. So for, for those of you who have very, very previous years, uh, you should not be lost. For the others, uh, you can ask questions, you can stop us, there's no issue. So, Alex and I prepared some slides. Uh, it's actually cool to present today, because yesterday the slides were not there, and the, the work was not there, was not there either. So, it's, um, so, we have a title which is WebRTCs in WebKits, because there are several WebRTCs, there are several WebKits, there are several webs, and what we want to do is just to re remove the S there and the S there. That's the idea. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, we are going to start giving you some context about uh, the code and how uh, WebRTC uh, started to be something inside the WebKit project. So, the implementation started like uh, long ago. Even Ericsson and Google started adding code to to support some kind of like uh, real time communications very early in, in WebKit. But uh, after bringing the script, uh, everything kind of like stopped. And the real effort started with WebRTC and WebKit project, which is something that uh, Ericsson and us and some other people started. And Alex Bujar that also with that uh, in the beginning of 2015. And it started at that point because uh, in the previous year, uh, Ericsson released uh, a library which is called OpenWebRTC. So the idea was to add uh, support for WebRTC inside WebKit using OpenWebRTC. And it was, this was like the beginning of 2015. So then time passes and nothing happens. Like we had some branch, uh, Igalia was helping with the branch and Ericsson was doing some things, but uh, nothing really like got working in one year and a half. Like in the middle of 2016, uh, suddenly we get some funding to make this happen, finally. Because the branch was in GitHub and Upstream, we didn't have anything, and uh, Apple at that point was not doing also anything about WebRTC. So, like, like last year, one year ago, we started uh, working in upstream in the that branch, which was based in OpenWebRTC inside the uh, upstream web. And the branch was like in kind of a prototype situation, so we had to spend more time than we that we expected because there are even some uh, features that we were not there, uh, like uh, for instance, some parts of the IDL were not prepared for for some things that we needed. They were testing with like a, a small fabricated WebRTC server, so there was not that many <coughs> tests done with it. And and I think finally we got this working in the end of 2006. Um. Yeah. So in the end of 2016, we, we got this working with the Open Web RTC bucket, uh, which means that uh, we had some demos and we could do some communication with Chromium and things things like that. So yeah, that, and as I said, uh, when doing this, this effort, uh, we realized that there are that many features uh, not there in OpenWRTC, and that uh, Ericsson was not uh, working anymore. I mean, it was, they had some maintenance mode, some people working on it, but they didn't have any features, and they were, I mean, at some point they even proposed us to take, uh, adopt the library, and, <laughs> and we, was, we were considering it, but uh, we thought that it was not, uh, we didn't have the, the resources enough to, to make it work. And we, as, as I said, we, we had to add features like the, the serializer or even the bounding thing, which is an interesting point 
uh, that describes how complex is WebRTC. It is like at some point in, in ours, we it was almost ready. Everything was working. We were using Google ATP RTC test server, and everything was okay, and everything was working. And then suddenly, the next week, nothing works. It's like, what's going on? And this is one of the things that you have with WebRTC. Suddenly, someone changes the server, the application in the server, and the configuration of the of the overall search changes. And then they require some new feature, not a new, but some feature that you don't have support in other words. And we took it took us like two months or one month and a half to have the support for that in open world to see and even in G Streamer, RTP, we even had to modify that for that what it's called banding, which is basically uh, sending video and audio in the same in the same connection. And that gave us some like uh, so good uh, information about the situation that we had with the library to make uh, decisions about what we were going to, to do about it. Yeah. So, um, in WebKit, the design allows multiple backends, which is, which is somehow nice. And, um, for Mac and iOS ports of WebKit, it was decided not to go uh, through OpenWebRTC. One reason is OpenWebRTC is really tied to JetStreamer, which might not be available or really usable in some platforms. So we took the approach, like, like OpenWebRTC was there, and we, we took the LibreOTC approach, which was uh, fine too. So we ended up with two different ports but are very different, both in terms of um, implementation and function functionality, like nothing can be shared. Um, so for the Mac and iOS ports, um, the implementation <coughs> is functional now. It, it has shipped in uh, Safari 11. Um, I just want to share some small features that might be interesting but that might be different from other browsers. And uh, this is something I would like to keep consistent throughout WebKit. So be it WebKit JTK, Web, WebKit, whatever port, if we have WebRTC, I hope that we will get just one um, functionality. So the first thing is that uh, for WebKit ports, we, we try to um, make sure that privacy was um, kept no matter what. So um, in WebRTC you might, for instance, give different IP addresses where you can be actually reached, which is very cool because this way you are sure that you can connect with whatever people. But if you're giving um, your private IP address, then in terms of privacy and figure printing, you're, you're, you're losing a lot. So we decided um, if there's no user consent to not uh, leak the private IP address. <coughs> it has the issue that if you're behind a NAT, then you might not be able to get peer to peer with the same guy on, on the same NAT. <coughs> um, so it's a restriction. So data channel typically will not be available in, in those cases. Um, we are thinking of solutions for that, and we will try to push them, but currently that's, that's the way it is. You need to use a, a turn server basically to peer to peer, which is a bit bad. When get user media, when you get access to the camera or the microphone, then the user actually clicked on the prompt and said, okay, I'm okay to give my face, my audio, whatever, to the website. So we thought that in that case, leaking the private IP address was fine. And um, that way, if you were doing a video conference call, behind that, it will work. If you were just using data channel, it will not work uh, the same. Um, that's like that. We also have different things uh, that were surprising to WebRTC providers, like um, autoplay of video with sound uh, is blocked on Mac and iOS ports, so there, there's a need for user gesture. Um, and in the typical WebRTC session, you have like a big video element without control, so there's no way for the user to actually engage into the communication, so there's no way to activate the video um, playing. 
So there we decided that when get to the media event did, the user clicked on the prompt again. So there's, there's a click already. So we decided to remove that restriction in that case. If you're not doing uh, get to the media prompt, then there's a need for the website to actually um, let people click so that the video will auto play. Or you can do video, muted video first, and the user will click to actually get some. Um, so that's another thing. The, the third thing which is a bit controversial is that currently in Mac and iOS ports there's only H.264 support. So basically there's only hardware acceleration codecs. That are, so all hardware accelerated codecs that are in the platform might be supported in the future. Um, currently there's only H.264, so no VP8, no VP9. Um, that's, that's like that, uh, but at least it's not hurting battery life, because um, if VP8 was provided, it would be currently only for software. And uh, if you do the difference, especially on mobile devices, it's, it's a huge difference. So, so that's where we are for uh, Mac and iOS port. Now, um, a few things on test testing. Um, WebRTC is complex, and uh, being able to debug and to test, uh, automate testing for uh, WebRTC providers is really useful. Uh, you can see that, yeah, it's complex to understand this slide, that's the purpose. Um, so we added um, very recently WebWire support uh, in, um, in WebKit for WebRTC specifically. So if you automate, if you start a session with WebDriver, uh, mob capture, so uh, camera capture will be on without prompt and it will only uh, get you access to mob devices, no real devices. Um, you will be able to set uh, in the configuration step things like allow get user media for HTTP because in some environments it's good pool to test with HTTP and not HTTPS. Um, and there's also the possibility to disable the ice filtering that we, we talked about as well. Um, very recently, we added what, um, um, a new method to the drive, to web driver, which is called set permission, and you can do set permission, get to the media, true or false, and it will control uh, the prompt, basically what the user is doing. This allows you to control and get a flow where, okay, let's say the user click OK on the prompt. Let's say, oh, let's say denied access. So what will do my website? So this is not yet standardized, but um, I hope it will get standardized soon. Um, and we are also added web, web inspector support for uh, logging. Um, and we are applying this strategy for um, all the media stuff because we know it's hard to debug. And uh, we know that the logging that we have um, for release logging is limited for performance reasons. But when you open Web Inspector, you can actually toggle on and increase the level, the level of logging that will be shown in the inspector. And this way, we really hope that it will help people um, identify issues and uh, get bugs fixed. So that's it for like the current situation for WebRTC in Mac and iOS port. Now, how we implemented it um, with LibreRTC, so it's a Google open source project. So basically, in WebKit trunk, there's the LibreRTC source code that is there. Uh, we are trying to um, not forget as, so the changes that we made should be kept as minimal as possible. That's our strategy so that we can easily sync it like every few months or so, and that our maintenance related to LibreRTC will be, will be as small as possible. There are a bunch of libraries uh, around LibreRTC. One is interesting, is Boring SSL, which might, it's open to discussion. Uh, we started to have discussion there, so maybe we can try to explain the strategy there for the WebPGTK board. The other libraries may be less contentious, uh, but still they are quite, it's a big piece of technology, so there are a lot of libraries there. So, 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy with that. I spent like the whole night doing that. <laughs> yeah, that's not true, but I'm so glad that, you know, there's a train there, there's a train there, and they will, they will not, like... Train crash. No, they will not crash. <laughs> well, well, it could crash from time to time, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's cool. So, yeah, the plan with Alex is to actually um, have WebPJTK and probably WP back in the LibreRTC. Um, that would mean removing the open WebRTC um, backend, and with that we can actually uh, reduce the cost size, uh, reduce maintenance, and simpli simplify things. That's an announcement. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's, a, that's a plan. It's up to discussions, so we, we welcome your feedback there. I'm happy to do it. So maybe you want to talk about your prototype? Yeah. What, what it's doing? So, uh, as I said, we had like the uh, web thing assisting the open web RTC backend working for us. It, it worked with some servers. And uh, in the beginning of this year, we even tried to support other servers like DC. And we already had some doubts because of the situation of the project and the limitation of the features. But adding other projects like DC show us that it's kind of like a crazy thing that we tried to maintain both backends, and considering Apple was already supporting the WebRTC, we decided to go in that direction. And not crashing the train because the drivers are there, not going to crash. <laughs> <coughs> so, as Joanne said, our plan is to remove open WebRTC backend of WebKit uh, in a really near future because we are going to do it probably before even uploading our LibreRTC. Uh, <coughs> Initial prototype, which or we already have, like in the last month, we were preparing it. Uh, it already has data channel support and enumerate devices support, which was something that it was not supported in OpenWebRTC backend because OpenWebRTC backend couldn't do it with two processes for some limitation that they have about the identification of the devices. So we already have things that we couldn't have with OpenWebRTC. And it's good that it's still not working, but <clears throat> as you see, that uh, it's easier to get features uh, on that. And uh, also, uh, we plan, and this is important, the initial development that we are doing, we plan to do it uh, using uh, the LibreRTC API for everything. That means not just streamer initially. And that means creating like our own media player using the LibreRTC classes and, and everything. That's something that we're already doing right now while we are working us. <laughs> and that's all. Mm -hmm. and we're doing that. R plus. R plus. R plus. <laughs> Get it right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's right. Um, now, if, if we look back, uh, we, we try to simplify things at the kids' side. So that's great. Now, the reality is like this. This is Tokyo map, it's working fine. Um, so you can see three, three circle there. One, two, and three. Uh, this one, I would say, is like, WebRTC is a, it's a huge uh, piece of technology. So in itself, there's some um, complexity. But for users, it's more like, like that, meaning that you, you still have like, this and uh, reason is that it's not finished in terms of implementation in any browser. It's not finished in terms of stack as well, which explains why maybe it's not uh, finished in, in terms of um, implementation. And still, there are users of WebRTC for like a very long time. Uh, so websites are using um, WebRTC for a long time with something that is evolving. Um, so what, what can we do there? Um, we can identify like, two main um, parts that, are, that, that have their own complexity. First, there's the GS level, like APIs evolved, uh, browsers API evolved. Um, they are different, like Firefox is different from Safari, which is different from Edge, which is different from Chrome version. Versions are also different. So sadly, um, 
many people just need to use adapter.js. Um, if you look at this graph there, it's the number of commits, and you see that it's increasing, and the, the size of the library is also probably increasing right now. Um, I, I would hope that the community at some point will be able to decrease the size of adapter.js so that it, it's something that will be no, no longer usable, no longer used, because it's, it would be no longer needed. That's all just the JavaScript level. Then, if you start starting to talk with uh, GC, Yanos, um, all kinds of uh, um, different middleware, then you have issues not at the API level but below. And it's another uh, level of complexity that we, we will need to get sorted. And there, there's no, no way that JavaScript can, can help us. Uh, these guys are trying to solve uh, all these issues, but it's is difficult. So, for this part, uh, I don't have any good advice, except that think we, we, we should be aware that WebRTC is not finished. There's a lot of work that needs to be done, uh, and we should we should go on um, with the idea that yeah, this is nice, um, but if you're going this way, maybe you will never meet this guy there. So what we want is really to have like this and everybody will be there, which is just perfect. Um, we're not up there. I think that there are some ways we, we can help, like w, WPT uh, is great for making browser consistent. Uh, for WebRTC, what can be done currently is mostly um, testing the JS level, which is already very good um, because we'll be able to converge and be able to measure how much browsers are converging for that part. And for the other part, what would be cool would be to add new tools like being able to replay packet-based uh, scenarios, uh, like uh, packet-based unit testing, so that we can replay, oh, there's this issue with that middleware, let's take Wireshark, uh, get the, um, all the packets, and have a tool that may export these to something that can be reused within WPT so that whenever we have an issue, it's fixed, there's a test, and there will be no regression. Uh, there's no such tool. Uh, it's a lot of work also, and I guess people currently are mostly uh, focusing on implementing the stuff. And um, that may come in the future. But, um, let, let's be helpful. Uh, I mean, HTTP, in terms of interoperability to time, we will see will also to time, take, take time and yeah, there's, there's a lot of work. So if you can, if there are more people working on it, I'm sure it will be resolved more quickly. So, that's very good. If you have questions, uh, you're welcome. Um, yeah. yeah. So Opus was among the libraries that was either highly uncontroversial. Um, it's, I guess it's only controversial in the sense that it might be redundant with what is already available in some uh, distributions or some platforms. Uh, but it's a small library. Um, in terms of license, I don't think that there's a big issue. In terms of IP, it's probably fine too. Um, it's widely used. So Opus is widely used. It's like the, probably the, the code that is mostly used by um, browsers for web RTC. So, so Safari on both Mac OS and iOS does support Opus? Yeah, through um, the Opus library that we checked in. Yeah. Awesome. So it's, it's working great. So for web RTC? For web RTC only, yes. There, it's a big difference, yeah. Like, uh, and there are a lot of different audio collectors that, that are available as well. Um, and it's also only for words. Okay. So, growing as a cell. That's fine. Thank you. <laughs>